Test, test. Can everybody hear me? We good? My name is Ty Montague. Welcome. Welcome to Rethink. The Rethink speaker series is intended to provide inspiration and hopefully some practical insight into this incredible time of change that we all find ourselves in, where we are asked seemingly daily to rethink our relationship to habits and institutions that we might have heretofore taken completely for granted, things like work, how we work, where we work, who we work with, why we work, what, what gets us out of bed to go to work every day. Um, and the Rethink series is ongoing. It will happen here at Grind the second Tuesday of every month from now, uh, hopefully uh, forever, till infinity and beyond. Um, but today is special because today is the first Rethink. And today we have a very special person here to talk to us, uh, share her wisdom. Her name is Sarah Horowitz. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of Sarah, but, um, and her exploits were too numerous to commit to memory, so excuse me, I'm gonna to refer to a couple of, uh, couple of notes here. So Sarah is the founder of an organization called uh, Working Today, and Working Today is dedicated to representing the needs and concerns of the growing independent workforce. That would be us. And Working Today, uh, Sarah and her team uh, launched uh, the Freelancers Union, which is an entity that is designed to pioneer a new form of unionism. The Freelancers Union seeks to update the nation's social safety net, developing systems that allow all working people to access affordable benefits regardless of their job arrangements. And the Freelancers Union now boasts over 165,000 members. I hope there are some members here today. Um, Sarah has an amazing resume. Before founding Working Today, uh, she was a labor attorney in private practice and a union organizer. Before that, she was a public defender. She is a John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation Fellow. Went to some really impressive schools, Cornell, undergrad, uh, law degree at Buffalo, at SUNY Buffalo, and got her master's degree from someplace called the John F. Kennedy School of Government. How do you pronounce that? Harvard? I think I've, I think I've heard of that. Um, we are not unique or alone in our admiration of Sarah and her work. She and the work of the Freelancers Union have been featured throughout pop popular business press, uh, including the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, The Economist, The Atlantic, Wired, Fast Company. She's been on Now with David Brancaccio, uh, The News Hour with Jim Lehrer, and on NPR's All Things Considered. Uh, the title of her talk today is Rethink Mutualism, and I would like you all to give a very warm welcome to Sarah Horowitz. Thank you, very nice. Okay, how are we doing for sound? Sounds good. All right, so everybody wants to stay in the back. We won't make anybody move up. I can't persuade you. All right, if you're, if you're so inclined. So I want to talk to you today. The, the name of this talk is Rethinking Mutualism. And mutualism is a phrase that I and many are trying to figure out, like, how do we talk about this? So what I'd love is to talk about a number of things and then come back to that at the end. I think that one of the things, if we went around the room and we talked to everybody a little bit about our lives, we wouldn't maybe come up with the phrase quiet revolution, but if we dug a little deeper, we'd realize that each and every one of us is actually living a life of this quiet revolution. Let me make sure I stay on my spot. OK, I'm allowed to walk. OK, excellent. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, look around this beautiful space. And let me first just say thank you so much to Grind. This is really, first of all, I think a phenomenally beautiful space. And it really demonstrates that there's something here, that people are committed to something, uh, a way of working and a way of being. And so let me just first say thank you so much for having me. And good luck with your kickoff event. So. 
Okay, so look around this place. I don't know if you can see right here, but what I can see is this is where all the coffee is. And it's not like it's coffee in a can from the supermarket where apparently a lot of that coffee is picked too soon and that's why it's not actually that good. And I know that if we started having a conversation about coffee, you, many of you would be able to actually explain what makes coffee good. Well, why does that matter? Because we're starting to come to a point where we're saying with our technology, with the way we're living, things are getting too fast and too crazy and something is going on. And we end up having conversations a lot about food, which is sort of weird. Like, why am I here from the freelancers union talking about Rethink, opening up with the concept of food? Because I think every single one of us knows that we're starting to look at the way we eat, what we eat, how we're leading our lives, and are starting to say something is breaking down in our society that's causing us to reflect at the very basic core of who we are. We're looking at an economy that's changing so much and the institutions of old that we used to rely on that sort of made us have a sense of the world, many of us, some of us would say, oh, those institutions actually never spoke to me. Some people might say those organizations and entities, they used to speak to me, they don't speak to me now at all. And what am I talking about? So if I'm starting talking about food and coffee and space, and now I'm saying there's something about a kind of intuitive feeling about the way we're leading our lives. On the one hand, we're making these really good choices for ourselves in the neighborhoods that we live in, the way we're relating to our friends and families, but it almost feels like we have to shield that from the rest of society, that it's something that we can't be our full selves in the ways that we look to our leaders. And so there's this great phrase, I don't know if people have ever heard of, the people lead and the leaders follow. So that is really the point, that there's a point at which we look to leaders to lead us, and sometimes the leaders are back in another era, and so we have to quietly start thinking about how we're gonna lead our lives. And that's something that I started calling like the quiet revolution. I am not alone, you can Google it. Quiet revolution has sort of every 10 years there's a quiet revolution. But that what's important is this idea that we using common sense, going to the essence of our thought of what we're persuaded by are making decisions about the way we're leading our lives. And so it got me to thinking like when we go to Washington DC, what do we see? So those are the buildings, this is the, GAO, the Government Accountability Office. How many people want to work in a building that looks like that? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> health and Human Services, does that make you feel healthy? <laughs> or human? Or, human? <laughs> or serviced? <laughs> and you know, we laugh, but like this is where the dis decisions for our country are being decided, and that's the Department of Labor, enough said. Um, and just to just really drive the point home, we are now people who work independently, freelance, free agents, consultants, whichever way you wanna call what it is we do, that building has no idea. That's they have a department called the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and they haven't counted this part of the workforce since 2005. And the reason they counted it in 2005 is they had a Secretary of Labor named Robert Reich, who was actually excellent, and started saying, hey, there's a new workforce. And if you go deep into the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they'll tell you there's this thing, it's called contingent workers. Those contingent workers are workers who really hate working this way, they suffer, they're misclassified. And by the way, the whole thing is really only 5%. I tell you, 18% of the workforce is part-time, 10% of the workforce is self-employed. Right now, that's 18%. So dudes, 5% by your own numbers doesn't even make sense. So need a little bit of creativity going on in that building. But then it's not like in other areas we think they're really on it. So these are just pulled from the latest headlines of the day. Newt Gingrich, child labor laws, truly stupid. 
Virginia GOP to require loyalty oath in presidential primary. Rick Santorum is coming for your birth control. <laughs> so one of the things that I think is really striking about like grind, look at this place. Look at yourselves, look at your friends and the people you work with. What's our esprit de corps? It's about building. You know, I, I don't want to sit and listen to like what's wrong. You know, I only want to know what's wrong as a data point to be figuring out the future. And that's what we're here for, is to figure out our own solutions, but to start thinking not just about like our own solutions, but about how we're going to be building this over time. Um, we used to have uh, someone who worked with us named Megan, and one time we were brainstorming all these big policy ideas, and Megan said this thing about, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you don't sit there and say, what's a government program for me, right? Is there anyone who wakes up and says like, oh, hmm, like I wish that I could get unemployment insurance, but sadly I'm an independent contractor, so I can't. No, you wake up and you lead your life. And if you need to find gigs, you go out and you access your network and you talk to other people and you network and you do these things that are the things that work for you. And as it turns out, this is what's driving this economy, that this kind of organic need that's happening to you and to everybody else it's starting a whole range of cottage industries. Again, this quiet revolution. So we're now seeing companies that couldn't get funding in the traditional way. Well, now there's Kickstarter. There's Airbnb. I don't know if people have read Collaborative Consumption. That actually what we're seeing is that there's a whole range of new companies, new nonprofits, for-profit social business companies that are starting to enter into this field to say there's a whole range of needs that millions of people are having and they're not being taken care of by these big buildings in Washington and so we're starting to see that there's this really interesting market but let's go back a second because remember we said in the beginning or I said really but some of you went like this <laughs> that um, <laughs> about food how many people are sitting here and you know I'm, I'm a mother of a, of a 12 year old and I think about two generations in the future, and I look at what's happening to our society, and it pains me that our national leaders are not talking about the environment. Here I am, the head of the freelancers union. Why is that like number one on my agenda? Because there's something about the way that we're making our choices that make no sense at all. And it starts always with food for me and for many because it's a basic need that, that we all have and that we want to start thinking about our environment, our food, about the way we live, that we want a sane life, and we have to start taking those basic needs and articulating it so that we, as members of a democracy, can say, there's a big feedback loop here, people. We citizens are leading our lives in an everyday way that we want the government to evolve and to change and to be there in the ways that we need it to. And so when we look at this, we have to start saying there's hope because we're starting, but now we're seeing real capital coming into this field. I don't know if people have been reading, but Steve Case has turned out to be a pretty damn shrewd investor who's starting to enter this market. There's Union Square Ventures are starting to fund companies like Etsy, fabulous company. And so what we're going to see is that people are starting to have new kinds of consumption demands. Instead of the consumption that came out of World War II, where we said, we will make a deal in the way that we're going to have a society where you can work 40 hours a week, your kids will go to college, you will have a certain life. That deal's over. That's not America anymore. There's not, that has broken down. So now we have to say, okay, if that's broken down, then what's new? We now, going back to the people will lead and the leaders will follow, we are now starting to be the vanguard. That independent workers and freelancers are leading the way. And we're leading the way together in the very everyday w things that we're doing. But this is the part where new mutualism comes in. We are not individuals here, isolated and alone. If you ask the most seasoned freelancers among us, the most seasoned ones, they will take five minutes and describe their social network. 
They will describe their network to you, and they will tell you over the last 10 years, when I lost that big, big gig and I had no money coming in, these are the three people I called. This is who outsourced work to me when, I, when they had too much. This is who I called when I didn't have one gig coming in, and I was like going on to food stamps. And by the way, 12% of our members were on food stamps in the last few years during the recession. And that if you think being a freelancer is going to be because you are so excellent and amazing that you will figure it out on your own, just find a seasoned freelancer who will say, no, you're amazing, find five other amazing people, and that will be your best network. But we have something to teach our government. And that is that we have to be interconnected. Capital has to start coming together to fund the institutions from which we are going to buy. And what we are going to buy are going to be fair trade type coffees, or setting up cooperatives, having co-working spaces that work for us. There's going to be a whole revolution in the way that businesses are going to be funded, in the ways that we as consumers are going to act. But what's going to be different is we're starting to have insight into the way capital works. If you keep expecting that there's going to be private, cap private equity that is going to be driving this train, then let me just tell you right away, give up your social purpose dreams. Because when you have short-term returns that are maximum, it is very rare that you can do social good. And what we're going to see is a new range. There's going to be there's something I don't know if people have called B Corps. There's a whole movement. B Corps have passed in seven states, just recently in New York, saying that corporate boards can consider other things besides profit maximization. Don't get me wrong. Revenues have to exceed expenses. Freelancers Union, we own our own insurance company. I guarantee you, revenue has to exceed expenses. That's called sustainability. And what we're moving toward is to start saying, those big buildings are not working for us. My pet peeve, I think they should rent them and then go to lower income areas in Washington, DC that have like, look like this. But that's another talk. But what we could be doing is saying, let's start having a government that talks about how it's going to fund your businesses. Let's start talking about a repurposed Department of Labor, Small Business Administration, that's going to have capital that's much more patient. Why should they do it? Presente. Why should they do it? Not just because your idea is excellent, but because we're recognizing that that's actually how we're going to be really creating jobs. And we're going to be thinking about a horizon that's two generations ahead, that we're going to be looking at executive compensation. So, all these ideas, though, ultimately come back to us, right? So if we started at the beginning, we said, there's something in the way that we work. There's something in the way we consume. We are individuals, and it's kind of in us. And that should be the piece that persuades you, because if that doesn't persuade you, then none of this is going to make sense. But you kind of know it's true that you want to lead a more sane life that's less er. But then we started saying, because we've changed our consumption patterns, we're starting to see markets that are developing, markets that are developing to meet those needs. But then we talked about private capital, and there's no way that private capital can be the same as it has been for the last 25 years, because there's just no way to achieve those goals. And then started saying that there is a role of government, but that it's not a government that's coming in those big buildings that it has to be just as it was created in the 1930s to deal with the manufacturing era and de the depression, that we have our own, thank you very much, recession and new ways that people are working. And we don't want the same old, same old. We want something new. But this has got to be something that's coming from the whole society. People maybe would be interested to know that mutual organizations are for profit. Cooperatives are for profits. Revenues exceed expenses, but there are no private shareholders. And they're not quaint and cute organizations only. Ace Hardware is a, is a cooperative. It's a purchasing cooperative. Land O'Lakes, Sunkist, all cooperatives. Outside of this country, we used to have mutual insurance, which is another topic about what happened with our own health insurance. But if you go to many, many countries, Mutuals are in the billions of dollars in assets. So it's not like these don't, aren't sophisticated 
organizations. But the, the, they are there, and we must learn from them. And we must start to think about how do we recreate the sector that's going to be achieving the social needs that we have. What really has to happen, I hope, is that you find ways to join organizations that, that work for you, right? Because we're not going to do this alone. This is a time to start finding those groups that, that resonate. And that would be here. And so one to do is tell 10 friends about this place. Because this is the biggest chance you're going to have in terms of building your networks. I know you don't need to tell me, because freelancers, you know, my favorite thing, can I just tell a little story, is we would have these events with elected officials. We have now, as, as you said, 165,000 members. We have 110,000 in New York. And we have had some very significant success in, in the political realm. So we were able to end the unincorporated business tax for people in New York, uh, freelancers in New York making under 100000 a year. Right now, the state assembly has passed a law that if you don't get paid, you can go to the Department of Labor and file a complaint. And really what that would do is give you some leverage to go back to the company. And it's now up to the Senate. We're talking to them right now. But, but what we have to start doing is coming together to start pushing these things. And I forgot what my story was, but I'm going to come back to it blessedly if, if I remember by the end of this. OK, I know. It's just like Rick Perry. I think I was the only person in America that felt really badly for him. It's like, <laughs> um, OK, so 10 friends about grind. Then Freelancers Union, we have these advocacy campaigns, and we need people to join and to, and to participate in them. So come and join that. And, and then make your business a B Corp. And um, truth be told, one of the founders is on our board. But it's really important because it starts to say that you have your own businesses, and you're going to start registering and being part of something else. Because that's going to be the trick, is turning the thing from just what's happening to us to really talking about what kind of society we have. And that, that is really it. Thank you so much. I've learned that a lot. That was great. Thank you very much, Sarah. That was, that was fantastic. Okay. Really appreciate that. Um, well, that was, that was terrific. Uh, I had never personally, just uh, on a personal note, I had never connected kind of what you are up to at the Freelancers Union and what we are trying to do with Grind to the overall cultural change that's taking place and uh, connecting it to food and to that kind of personal sense of changing your own personal trajectory uh, and joining it together was uh, that was great really interesting I'd never thought of that and that's incredibly inspiring so thank you very much um, Everybody join, if you, if you are a free radical or a freelancer, join the Freelancers Union. I will shill on Sarah's behalf. Uh, it's a really important organization. And thank you all for being here. You are free to hang out and have some coffee and some bagels and to uh, try to corner Sarah if she is able to stick around and uh, talk to her one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you all for being here.